Welcome to this edition of Midweek Geek. As a lot of you know, I have just rolled over a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel, so that's what I'm going to talk about candidly in this episode of Midweek Geek. How much money do I make on YouTube with a thousand subscribers? Let's get into it. Yeah. This is Geek Therapy Radio. Your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Okay, so real quick, why this is also going to be a video on YouTube. So why am I doing a video? Why am I doing a topic discussing how much money that I make with a thousand subscribers on YouTube? That's because according to the current uh, rules of monetate monetization on YouTube, one of the requirements is you need at least 1,000 subscribers. You need X amount of views, uh, out of hours watched per month. You need X amount of, of whatever else. But one of the stipulations, you can have a million views on YouTube for one, make one video, have two subscribers and get a million views, but you still can't really get monetized. Of course, you can appeal it. You can write to YouTube and ask them to monetize you that way. But one of the requirements, nonetheless, regardless, is that you need 1,000 subscribers for the average Joe or Jill to monetize their YouTube channel. And I just rolled over that. Currently, I'm sitting at just over 1,100 or so subscribers on YouTube. And that is a goal that a lot of new YouTubers strive to get. So first of all, how long did it take me to get to a thousand subs on YouTube. It took me, I would say, a little less than than a year and a half to go from zero subscribers on YouTube to a thousand subscribers. And believe me, that was doing pretty well. That If you get a thousand subscribers in a year and a half, if you get a thousand subscribers in two years, that's wonderful. And the point here is that you need to be patient. Just because you make a YouTube channel, you can have the greatest content in the world, but it still can be very slow. For most people, it's very slow to get subscribers. And having subscribers isn't really what counts anyways. What really counts are views. So you can have a hundred subscribers and then get a million views per video. Great. I'm sure YouTube will monetize you at that point. But for most of us, we need a thousand subs and we need to meet these, uh, meet these criteria to get monetized. So if you're starting a YouTube channel, be patient before you get to your thousand sub mark. It's a great milestone to get to, but I'm sure you're curious and a lot of people listening to this podcast or a lot of people watching this YouTube video who may have YouTube channels that are they might think that are growing too slowly or, or whatever. They can't wait to get to the thousand dollar, the thousand uh, sub mark because it might start making them some real money. Uh, OK, so with a thousand subscribers, let's go over here and click around. According to YouTube, I'm pulling down. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's go back. Why am I not in analytics right now? All right, I'll pop this up on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube. My total estimated revenue, and remember, I've only been monetized for a couple months here. I got monetized back in May. So with a thousand subscribers, I have earned thus far a little less than $35 overall net. Um, Am I going to see all that $34? Probably not. YouTube is going to take some cuts from that, but I'm going to see I'm going to see gas money. And that is all I was after and religion and realistically uh, was looking for through monetizing the YouTube channel at a thousand subs. I was like, I'm not going to get I'm not going to make millions of dollars off this. I'm not going to make hundreds of dollars off this. I'm not going to make thousands of dollars off this. I am going to make I'm going to make a few dollars off of this per month. And that was just fine with me. I'm not a greedy person. I'm not, I don't put uh, the cart before the horse in terms of, oh, wow, just because I got monetized, that means they're going to make a lot of money now. No, I knew that if I was just making some gas money per month, that was great because that's gas money that did not exist before. To me, it's free money which is also a stretch to say because I do put a lot of work in the YouTube channel, but I was going to put that work in anyways. It was just nice to see a little bit of a return, a little bit of gas money for it in that regard. So what's important to earning revenue on 
the YouTube videos, what what is the most important things? People might think, well, if I have a 10,000 subscribers, then that means I'm going to make all that much more money on YouTube. Not necessarily. You can have 10,000 subscribers and still have nobody watching your videos. Um, so, so now at a thousand subscribers, that means that I can actually make money on the videos. And the most important thing for making money on YouTube is the views. You put the ads on there, you monetize your videos, but you need views, you need those clicks to generate the income from the ad revenue. So it's always, once you're monetized, it's views that count towards monetization. Now here's the second most critical thing that helps massively, no matter how big your channel is. The second most important thing to views is watch time. If someone clicks on your video and watches for 30 seconds and then clicks away, that's horrible. If you put up a 10 minute video and someone watches for a minute or so and then cl keep clicks clicks away from that, that tells YouTube that nobody cares about what your the content you're putting out there. So if you can hold audiences for several minutes on a YouTube video for more than a certain amount of time on a on a music or not on a music video, on a YouTube video, that tells YouTube, "Hey, people are liking this, we'll promote it." And that's critical. That last thing I just said will promote it. If you have a very high uh, percentage of watch time on a video, let's say people watch one of your 10 minute videos for seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, that that's a very high percentage of watch time per video on that video. And YouTube algorithm is going to take that video and start promoting it and putting it as, as featured content. So if someone's for instance, is looking for uh, MacBook Pro news or whatever like that, and you put out a MacBook Pro video with some news, and people are clicking it, and they're liking what you're saying, or they're liking you, which is most important. They're liking you. You can t be talking about a potato. No one's going to care unless they relate to you, which is very important to me and my listeners. But let's say they watch it, and they watch that video for seven minutes out of the eight or nine minutes that the that the video is up. That tells the algorithm, hey, I'm going to promote this video because people like this video. We want people staying on YouTube for all that much more time. So we are going to promote this video. Versus, like I said, if you have a 10-minute video, somebody watches for one minute, that means you have a 10% audience retention or whatever. YouTube algorithm isn't going to pick that up and promote that because that's telling YouTube algorithm that people are watching this and losing interest quickly. It's not going to keep their attention. So it's a fine balance. So I make gas money. I make about $30 a month or so on YouTube with a thousand subscribers. But here's what I want to stress. One of the things that I say on in my uh, videos and that I tell listeners when they I tell them to go to YouTube, I don't have a Patreon. I don't have any sort of GoFundMe or Patreon. I don't. I'm not. I don't ever ask for money from my audience directly because I because maybe that comes from the nature of radio. There's ads that play. That's how we make money is the is the advertising. So if I'm putting ads at the beginning of my video or in the middle of the video or whatever. I can't in good faith ask you at the end of the video or any time in the video to support my Patreon, to give me more money. I'm not going to double dip like that. It's important to me to be upfront and honest with how I earn my money in this venture, especially on YouTube. So I'm not going to take money from whoever's putting an ad at the beginning of my video and then turn around and ask my viewers, can you give me another dollar? You're, you're already watching the ad. That's how you're paying for it. You're subscribing to my channel. You're watching my videos. That is, that's how I'm going to make money off of YouTube. So I'm not going to double dip. That said, if I ever lose my radio show, if I ever lose uh, my main source of income or something like that, and it is all just YouTube and it is all just podcast, then I, I might consider, not, not that I'm definitely going to do it, but I might consider at that point doing a Patreon. And if I did something like that, then I would have to eliminate or drastically reduce any ads you might see on uh, YouTube videos or that you would hear um, on podcasts. So the point is, I can't in good faith ask you for money and then be taking all sorts of ad money too. A lot of people do that. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me being virtuous or something like that. But I think it's important to be honest. And I want to talk to you from whatever's on my mind and whatever's on my heart, I don't want to, you know, for instance, go into a segment bashing Intel and Intel sponsors my show in some sort of way. No, I don't want that. And if Intel did sponsor something, I'd want to be upfront about it, that they're sponsoring it. 
And that's all part of the balancing out of the balancing act as well. I want to be truthful, forthright from the heart with you guys, but I'm not going to turn away uh, a sponsor who will help me feed my family. That's how this business works. That being said, with every sponsor that I do eventually ever have, they're going to know that if their product is crappy, I'm going to point out faults with the product. I can't take a sponsorship gig from anybody and then just tell you that everything's perfect with it if there's something that's not perfect. If everything is good, I will honestly tell you, you know what, I, it's hard to find fault with this product that I'm reviewing or this product that's uh, paying for this content. But if there is a problem with the product, my sponsors will know that I will tell my audience out of integrity that there is a problem with it. And if they're not okay with that, if the sponsor is not okay with that, then we'll have a separate discussion of whether we go separate ways or how we renegotiate the deal. But my point is, it's always about integrity with you listening and with you watching. Above all else, above everything, it's integrity. If I don't have integrity, I have nothing. I'm not, you don't build an audience with your, uh, with your broadcast on AM radio like I've got. You don't build an audience with a podcast like I've got. You don't build an audience with a YouTube channel like I've got unless they can't trust what you're saying. Even if they disagree with it, even if they smash that thumbs down button on YouTube, you have to be honest. You have to keep that at the forefront. You can't just say things to people, please. People will see through that. I would rather take the flame of somebody staunchly disagreeing with me than someone saying re- or realizing this guy's a hack. He's a people pleaser. He's going to say whatever he's going to say to to please whatever his target audience is. No, my audience are geeks. I say we're all geeks about something. But the point is that I'm going to get subscribers. I'm going to have uh, lifelong followers of whatever content I put out because they're gonna relate to me. They're gonna relate to my personality. They're gonna like my delivery. They're gonna like the way I do things and they're going to to appreciate, even if they don't like it sometimes, my brutal honesty. And I think that's very important because let's face it, in the business that I'm in, in radio and making YouTube videos and all sorts of stuff, where I'm not, where it's not, uh, I'm not charging you to be here Nobody's forcing you to be here. No one's forcing anybody watching. No one's forcing you to hit the subscribe button. No one's forcing you to tune in at 10 uh, p.m. on Saturday nights. No one's forcing you to subscribe to the podcast wherever it's available. You're going to listen to it and then you're going to follow it or subscribe it or whatever because you were late to me, because you like what I'm doing, because you appreciate the honesty, because you appreciate whatever it is about me that you appreciate. That's how I'm going to get your attention. That's also why, especially on YouTube videos, I I don't care if you hit the bell icon. In fact, in a recent video coming up, I tell you, you don't have to hit the bell icon because I'll earn your attention the old-fashioned way by creating content that you might hopefully want to tune into. That's just the way I operate. If you if I put up a video and it, the thumbnail or the description looks like something you might want to watch, great, that's how I'm going to get your attention. That said, of course, you are free to do the notification icon, but I don't, I honestly don't care. And that's why I say when you choose to subscribe to Geek Therapy Radio in any way, shape or form on the, on the YouTube channel, on the podcast or tune in, be an avid listener on the broadcast, that I truly appreciate it because I know you don't have to. So that's all I really have to say about that. As you can see, I'm at the radio station right now. My my regular nine to five job, which is really noon to eight, is running the board over here on KTRH. That's why you always see this KTRH microphone label right here, is because while my show airs on KPRC, I work at KPR at KTRH during the week to earn my main bread and butter. Uh, yo, uh, d d d d. No, nothing. Okay. So as you can see, I just got interrupted because I am at work. That's how I make most of my money. Like any, like a lot of other people on YouTube, you have your side gig. Dave 2D, he has a regular job. He's awesome, by the way. Go, I mean, go subscribe to Dave 2D's channel. It's just absolutely amazing. So anyways, I hope you, I'm, I'm running on long now. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of candid look at how much I make on YouTube, kind of the methodology that I use, the mentality that I, that I have. 
when I go into all of this, when I do shows and just kind of my mentality with Geek Therapy Radio, period. Um, but thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Make sure you do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want. I fully, I just really appreciate the consideration because I know that you don't have to. I don't assume that you're going to subscribe. I assume that you're not going to subscribe. So I just appreciate that you even consider it. Uh, until next time, be good to each other, including yourselves. We often forget ourselves when we're, when we say be good to each other. That includes you. Please be good to yourself. Find a, a rekindle an old hobby, find a new hobby, just spend five minutes a week, please, just five minutes a week out of seven days indulging a hobby or a passion or an interest as a way of a healthy outlet. You might find out that you really like to knit, you know, you might find out that you really like to paint and that's going to be awesomely therapeutic for you because we're all geeks about something. Find your geek thing, lean into it. Take care until next time. And I guess that's it. I'm really bad at outros.